Okay, my friends, this is very, very interesting. Harvard scientists have unlocked unexpected new states of light. This is November of 2017. Now, they found these swirling vortexes totally unexpected. No. So what did they go ahead and do? They said, and moreover, <clears throat> it has been recently shown that similar elements can be incorporated into lasers directly producing these novel states of light, these spinning little disks. This may lead to unforeseen applications. Now, don't forget, this is November of 2017. Harvard has legally protected all intellectual property relating to, to the project and is currently seeking commercialization opportunities. The research itself has been published in the Journal of Science. Now, let's see what those spinning particles are. I did a, a, a video, which I'm going to show you right now, in, um, I think it was 2016, somewhere around there. Okay, this goes back to um, June of 2016. Now, that's over a year before Harvard is filing for intellectual property rights on what I just showed here. Now, this goes back to a channel that I had to well, I didn't close it up. It's still running, but it, it's inactive because it was very destroyed. Short. No. It's very, very simple. I am saying that light is dark energy, and it's also dark matter, and it, it's in the vacuum of space as it travels from the sun. It's obviously traveling from the sun. We know that. And it's heading towards the earth. It hits the earth. We know that. It's energy when we left. We know that. It's energy when it hits, we know that. It powers solar cells, it grows plants, it does all those things. It has to be energy in the middle, we just don't see it, it's dark. What happens is it, from the star or sun, or our sun, we're, it leaves and it's, uh, they're electrons, they're vortex particles. You see that, vortex particles. I was showing this, well, this research now, as you will see, was very sophisticated at the time I was showing it, 2016. Now, <clears throat> this is what I'm trying to, to elaborate to everyone. The universe is completely saturated with the particles we call light. They leave. Some spin fast, some spin slow. Now, when they hit our atmosphere, they're colliding with the atmosphere that we're scrubbing through. We have a certain amount of atmosphere glued to our Earth, basically. Think of it that way. And as we spin, it spins with us. It's sort of sloppy, but it spins. It's got to collide with all the particles in space that we're scrubbing through. I've shown it a hundred zillion times. This creates 2,700 degrees out here. That's because of the scrub. Same thing with the, the sun. The sun's only 10,000 on the surface. It's millions out here where it scrubs. This is where the radiation occurs and all the heat and light and all that and the scrub and energy and electrons. That's where we are getting our lightning and all that. And now we're so overcharged because our envelope is going big. This is what global warming is all about. It's just a bigger scrub. Now don't forget, this is six years ago. I'm talking about dark, dark energy. Look, light is dark energy and dark matter in a vacuum of space. It's those two particles together. Here goes. So, uh, is the theory? It's, it's, it's a new theory that is not proven, but it's, we have a lot of evidence. Anyway, it's spinning particle, and that creates the wave. You see the wave, and it's a particle. And depending upon the frequency, that creates the angular momentum, which creates the mass. Now, let me just explain to you right here. Just look at this. This is really the entire thing. This is electron flood theory. And I'll show you the particles. <laughs> it, they're all vortex particles. They spin. They're, they're spinning little electrons. And when I say an electron, I, this is what I call an electron. An electron is both the muon and an electron neutrino together equals an electron. You see that? No, you cannot. It would be hard for you to understand unless you can see. When you cannot see, you cannot understand. Even when you can see, most cannot understand. Maybe you will. Let's see. Here we go. Dipole electron flood theory. Nothing but dipoles exists. Everything that is constructed of 
dipoles. It's, it's nothing else. So electrons are the smallest particles that exist as a semi-stable particle. Photons are the smallest stable particle because they have an even number. Instead of one, they have a two. Electron, uh, protons are stable-ish at 1839, but add one more electron, they go to 1840, they become neutral. So a pro and that, they know that. You take the weight of one electron, add it to a proton, it becomes a, new, a neutron. I can't understand how you can't figure this out. It's just amazing. If you take 1839 particles, and they all weigh, I think it's like, well, here it is right here. Well, here it goes. This is the theory right here. This is all, the whole thing is right here. You've got the frequency times the 0.005 atomic mass units basically equals the mass. All right? Energy is nothing more than mass. Mass is the impact value. Now, uh, oh yeah, I try to figure out how much the Earth is growing. <laughs> this is uh, walked on memory lane. Uh, the average is 1,360 watts per square meter per hour times 1 million times 510 million equals uh, something with the Earth, with the Earth times electrons, watts times 0 0.0055 atomic mass units, Earth's mass, less luminosity. <laughs> Every electron weighs 0. 0.00055 atomic mass units. One proton weighs one atomic mass units. If you take this number, which is an electron, divide it into a proton, which is one, you end up with about 1839-ish. So that's what I say a proton is 1839 of the electrons. All right, I hope that makes sense to you. And just so you know, this is a hydrogen nucleus to physicists. This is a hydrogen nucleus to a Roger. 1839 particles are equivalent to their one particle. This gives us elegance. Plus, if you just even think about it, you, you explode hydrogen, it just goes off like unbelievably explosive. What's blowing up if you only got one of these? You put a spark to that, what happened? I can tell you what happened. This is what you had. You have a whole batch of these which are just barely able to stay together. And when you hit them with one more chunk of electrons flowing into them, which is a spark, nothing more than electrons, poof! They all take off and they just go flying and they completely separate from each other and they turn into just electrons and heat and explosiveness. All right, this is really what particles are made of. Light is in this saturated, absolutely saturated in space. 100% completely, totally saturated with light particles. And even John Glenn saw, he saw them, he called them fireflies. And when he was coming around the earth and he could see into the darkness of space and these were lighting up like dust, and they put, a lot of it probably was dust. And he could see all these, and he called them fireflies. There are millions of them, they're all kind of different colors. They're all, the average, I think he said the average like eight feet apart. So they're not right next to each other, but you can see through them very easily. That's why you don't see them. Nobody's ever seen them except John Glenn, and then they just told him he was an idiot, and they, they said that they, they, it was nothing but, I don't know, ice or something. It wasn't ice. It said particles of space, which are light particles, first of all, and dust. Now they know there's a ton of dust and sodium. They say our moon has a trail of sodium that trails behind it. Sodium is, an, is, sodium is big. It's not, it's not even hydrogen, it's sodium. So the whole universe is filled with, with atomic particles that are just vapor. So as, as light flows through that, as light is being obstructed by that vapor, trust me, light slows down. It's, it's, we're not expanding the way they think we are, the universe. And therefore Hubble Space Telescope's got issues. That's why nobody wants me around. <laughs> 
and I make everything so simple. That's it. That's the whole shooting match right here. You just, just you just been trained as a physicist. All right. Now you just we have to look into it deeper and see how we can maybe use some of this energy. And I think we can. I've already shown this a million times that if we can accelerate light, and I have shown that, no question whatsoever, and separate it, absolutely no question whatsoever, if we can c c capture what they say is the increase in energy, we can have free energy. And, you know, I'm being locked out, basically, is what it boils down to. This goes back, once again, let's just be sure we don't miss a damn thing. This goes back to June of 2016. And here is one of my presentations from then and probably quite frustrated let's see so here's the deal you got particles are spinning electrons and then no no nuclear bits at all and hold on let me go back to the beginning let's just get, you know i'm going to take the time to do it because this is not right that harvard is is saying that they own the intellectual property for this no absolutely not really sure it's very very simple i am saying that light is dark energy and it's also dark matter, and it, it's in the vacuum of space as it travels from the sun. It's obviously traveling from the sun, we know that. And it's heading towards the earth. It hits the earth, we know that. It's energy when it left, we know that. It's energy when it hits, we know that. It powers solar cells, it grows plants, it does all those things. It has to be energy in the middle, we just don't see it, it's dark. What happens is it, from the star or sun, or our sun, where it leaves, and it's, uh, uh, they're electrons, they're vortex particles, uh, is the theory. It's, it's, it's a new theory that isn't unproven, but it's, we have a lot of evidence. Anyway, it's spinning particle, and that creates the wave. You see the wave, and it's a particle. And depending upon the frequency, that creates the angular momentum, which creates the mass. And the so color. here's the deal. you got particles are spinning electrons, and then no, no nuclear bits at all, and that's why you don't see them. The entire universe is filled with this energy and this matter, and it is the animating matter of life. It's there to be used to start life and to create energy to do all kinds of things. Now, those particles are spinning electrons. Uh, the, the frequency of the spin times their weight, a uh, resting weight, which is supposed to be this, equals the mass. The energy equals the mass, that's all. When it comes down and it smacks into something, it has nucleated particles, which means it has electron clouds around a nucleus. It bounces off. What it bounces off, it gives off light. What it doesn't bounce off is absorbs as heat. And it is absorbed at heat in what they call quantum. So it jumps like and it takes a certain energy level to do that. And we see that in spectroscopy. So that is known. We see light bouncing off of things. That's known. We feel the heat. That's known. So all of this stuff is obviously, and it's, it's all known. Now, then you go down how much stuff is hitting the earth. Because now it's, there's a weight to this stuff. I just showed you that. They say that this is, this is how much it weighs. Now, the earth is growing like unbelievably. Look at this. The average per square meter, NASA says, is 1,360 watts per square meter, and that's, I believe, per hour. They don't say that, but I'm sure that's what it is. Times a million, which is a million square meters in a square kilometer, times 510 million square kilometers, which is the Earth's, they say, is the surface. And it's even more than that because it's hitting the atmosphere. But anyway, let's. But there is some radiation. Anyway, that would be the watts of the Earth. Now, the watts of the Earth times the electrons in a watt, which weigh that this here, is how much the Earth is growing per hour. All right, these are particles that were captured by Rodney Warren. He's doing the uh, the experiments, but I believe this is a tour. All right, this is when I had my <laughs> scratchy pointer. I went, I went to a feather because everybody, you're going to be upset. It sounds terrible. <laughs> anyway, all this was done. We had been working on this for a long time. The whole thing was done in 2016. And 
and somehow the electron activity does what you would think of. I think it might be capacitive inductance, and it's almost doing like an AC thing. I mean, look at it. The whites here, a little white spike coming out here, a white sort of spike here. I think it's, it's, it's doing a flip-flop inside there like AC. Anyway, over here are the energy. It's exactly what it does. They call it the muon wobble. These are, these are what they call the muon neutrinos, and these are the electron neutrinos. And as they concuss, these turn into electron showers. These don't change at all. Energy levels. Uh, okay, these are those little particles. And we have them both in red and green, which is the two colors of the lasers we've been using. And which would indicate to me that the structure is, is um, consistent. And the color, which indicates the energy, is um, dependent upon the frequency. Now, this particular shot, and they all do the same thing that we're showing here. There's a vortex up in here. I don't know if you can see that up in this area here. And you, you, won't, you can't see it in the shot, but they come out in, in a vortex oh, spray, a, 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 a shower. Hold on a second. All right, this is the three dimensions of, of a light propagation wave um, without hitting a slit. We're just ca capturing that literally in a mist in air. All right, let me just explain this. All these tiny little glowy particles are nothing more than gases that are in the air. They have, they have electrons, and anytime you push an electron against another electron, you get energy. If you can get it dark enough, and you have a, a strong enough receiver, which is this Samsung phone, this ga Samsung Galaxy 3 phone was just stunning. And Rod, I think he got it in 2012 when it came out and was doing all this research. I believe it started in 2012. I started with him, I, I can't remember, I don't know, maybe 2013, 2014. Um, but by 2016, we were done, everything was done. And this is the leading tip of the laser. And it is a wave because it's a magnetic field surrounding that particle, which is actually the particle is here. And it's starting to accelerate now. Normally, you'd probably have a bigger field surrounding it. It'd be more like a ball going through there. But it's beginning to accelerate now into the venturi. I honestly don't see how this could possibly be denied. This is what I'm saying is the vortex particle. Now look at what I'm saying this happens here. Yeah. It, it makes a right hand spin. You see, just like this. It's coming down and it's hitting right like this. This is exactly what we're doing. Now, it had gone through uh, um, uh, a Venturi slip way back here. And it came down to here, spinning into this. You know, when I say way back here, it's very, very, very close. Um, it's and then we've done a lot of additional research since then. Like I say, this was very early days, and um, but you can see that's just like a drill bit. Anybody that's a machinist could see that's a drill bit. It's spinning. Sometimes it spins off this way and they go out. Sometimes it's coming around this way and they spin off this way. When they come through, all of these little spots are push to shove. The electrons don't want to be next to each other. When they go through, they say, get out of my way, you get out of my way, you... That's why they set up these, what they call interference patterns. They're repulsion patterns. Uh, a slot. Well, it was spinning into the slot, and we're picking up the, the, the radiation down here. Let's put it that way. So, it's spinning through the slot, and as it spins through the slot, you can see that it it comes off the slot and in, and it gets denser here, and then here it can't penetrate, so it's over the surface, and then poof, it drops back in again here, and you get a dense color here, and then you get it's a drill it drops off again. Now, so it literally is is doing a right hand spin into the Venturi slot, and you can see the the, the pattern. It's very very apparent. All right, now, I, I've been talking about these Venturis. Well, this is a Venturi here. There's a round object here and a round pin here. And the light of the laser is being shined through and hitting there. Now, because of the architect... <laughs> see, how, see how nice this is? No scratchiness. <laughs> now, I, I was pointing out the Venturi back here. That's not correct. The Venturi is actually right in here. All right, and bang, and it splays out. You see this? That splay is right basically 
right where the edge of the venturi is and it rolls around this way we're just picking up such a brightness we really can't see the pins the pins are literally here and here and as it accelerated and I can't see anybody could say that's not acceleration it sure looks like it to me but one thing I can tell you for absolutely certain that is an increase in energy that is just exponential whenever you see white the whiter the white the more energy you have look at these fields you don't even know these fields are here you'd have never seen them until this pushed them back so hard that they illuminated themselves you don't see them over here all of a sudden here they are and they're just being illuminated because this is literally without any question whatsoever a nuclear explosion oh roger nuclear explosion yes exactly that. I'm, that's my claim and i am right it's a sub atomic nuclear explosion the bits and pieces that make up a nucleus are nothing more than electrons and i say a nucleus is nothing more than a pile of electrons all right, and this nucleus is 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 an atom. We're not working with atoms. We're working with light. We're working with this. That's what we're working with. All right, and if it can't get through, it has to go around. The little white ones can squish right through. The black ones can't. They have to go around. It's as simple as that. But you have to tune the Venturi just exact. And Rod Warren just accidentally, I would have never thought to do this. I mean, this was not my idea. It was just a total accident. And, we're, and, and then he didn't realize what he did. Nobody did. They were just looking at this. Just like the, the physicists now. Yeah, you're a crazy guy. Well, no. I said, Rod, I said, you, you got something going here, buddy. If you'll work with me, let's get this going. We, we, they'll, they'll have to pay attention. And he did, and he st stuck with me up until today, and they still haven't paid any attention to this. Now, this is six years ago. If we'd have done this six years ago, I'm absolutely certain we would be driving our cars for free today. That is an absolute enormous increase in energy, and we could still do this. I think within 30 days, we should be able to start developing this product. It's, just, it's so simple. And if Harvard or anybody wants to take credit for it, they, they're going to have to go to court. This, I, I spoke about this and I said, anybody can use this. Anybody can use our design and the Venturi. Anybody, for free. We don't want anything. We want it for the good of humanity. Not to commercialize it. Not to sell it. Not to make money. Not for status. None of that stuff. All right, here we go. Picture of the slit. It creates what's called a venturi, which compresses anything that comes in, and the only thing it can do is accelerate. There is no option. So it has to accelerate, and when it does, it creates this chaotic white high-frequency light, which I believe is Cherenko radiation, which it, it, now, as it exits this way and sprays all this white stuff, what it's spraying into is uncompressed space, normal space. So over here, the light disc that we saw before is now literally being sucked, you see that? Right into that vortex because the vortex now is creating acceleration. It, it, in all carbureted cars, it was it would atomize it and it's atomizing it. Look at, if you show the atomization of a Venturi, that's it. Light is water, light compresses, when I say light is water, yeah, everything is made of light, and light is literally almost like a liquid. And right here is where we had the fission, and here we have the fusion. Light fills the vacuum of space as dark energy. And when it hits things, it grows plants, it warms things, and it is the breath of God. That's what, that's, what, the that's what made him crazy too because <laughs> I said when, he said when I said light is like water and they said God said let there be light and I say no let there be life and then he said 
let's separate the waters from above from the waters below. And all that is, is the waters ab above are vapor of, of atoms, uh, you know, of, um, you know, electronic vapor. Condensed, it turns into water. That's all it is. You take, you take moist air and you condense it, it turns into water. So you separate the moist air above, which is literally the whole, they used to call it ether. The whole universe is filled with that very thin water. Literally is what it is. And below is the water that's below. The water above is separated from the water below by what they call the firmament. Well, the firmament is the ionosphere. We're spinning through it, scrubbing those particles, creating heat like crazy out there. That's the ionosphere. So, and that you, you could call that the firmament if you want. All these things, when I said these things, that went, they went off the charts. And that's when they attacked my channel and destroyed it. That's why I had to close the channel up. That's right, he sends me, he's, he's very prolific. And these are the trails of the electron. They're, they're the spinning vortex particles. And that's sort of slit. This is a single slit, same thing Venturi, so that we can accelerate the light and we can see what happens when it cascades back into uncompressed space. And it's very apparent with it. All right, that's, that's what I did back in 2016. All right, so this is, uh, I believe this is Harvard's pictures. You can see this is just nothing more than a blurry one of of this, and it's spinning. Light spins. I go hundred percent. I go along. I gotta show that hundred percent. Now, <clears throat> this is cool, but I'm gonna show you something that's really cool: the Higgs fields when they concuss. You know, I find this really humorous because this isn't even correct. It says a simulated Higgs event. Well, simulated, that's fine, but it, it's not popping out of the center like this. They're hitting huge particles head on, and then everything, a cloud of just debris comes out, and they see a lot of these circular fields. But this is not, it doesn't just pop from nowhere. Now, I say that every proton consists of 1839 or so electrons and every electron is a dipole we worked with light so we were lurking with this particles this size basically oops they were working with billions of particles there were 1839 of these already so they have 1839 billions of particles colliding and then looking through the debris and they see these Higgs fields yes but let me show you what they look like when you just hit them with photons just so there's no confusion I'm just gonna run through this it might be a little hard to understand but I hope it will not be this is light a pulse red laser and it creates a wave because there's a magnetic field surrounding a little tiny particle back here which I will show you in a moment when it is put through an atomizing venturi, these were what they used to use in carburetors to make the gas turn into atoms. And now I am making light turn into the particles of light called neutrinos. And at this specific spot, you get few fission of the two black and white particles, and then it becomes fission back here. Right here is raw energy. Now, let's, you, what particles are we talking about? Well, here's the particles we're talking about. This is what they look like. Remember that stream coming out of that light wave? That's it. This is what they are. The black one is a fixed particle and the white one is the glowy, bashy particles. This is literally dark matter and dark energy. And it is almost the entire mass of this particle. The, the white ones have literally uh, maybe no mass at all. And when they go through the Venturi right here, they split. The black and white ones split apart. Alright, so the black one just keeps going on its way and it can't get through. We separated them out. When they do theirs, everything is just freely flowing through the air. So see, they see the black ones, they see the white ones, they see them attached together sometimes, then they see other chunks, like ten of these and five of these and six of those and two of these, and they think they're all elementary particles. They are not. The only elementary particles that exist are these two, the muon and the electron neutrino, right there. All right, look at my little chart here. This is my little doodle. And this is the entire electron flood theory. <laughs> 
light travels at different speeds, I don't care what anybody says, or at least in different impact values, absolutely for certain. And, and it also is made of these two particles, which I show you very clearly. That's light. That came from a red laser. That's just not nothing. That is from a red laser. And then it expanded its energy envelope just enormously, which they claim, yes, when you can split the black from the white, which we did, the muon electron showers, we increase this energy potential, they say, 207 times. I can't disagree with that. We know that light photons look exactly like this. I have shown this a bazillion times and presented it to everyone that should have been interested with this kind of backing. Not just, oh, I look what I found, look what I found. No. Over and over and over. So I'm just, as far as I'm concerned, nobody could be that incompetent to just miss this with all of the backing and all the evidence that I sent. Now, I'm seeing it's, they're starting to come out. Oh, guess what we just figured? Guess what we just figured out? Well, that's not going to work.